Hi, this is Milo, owner of Milo Obstacle Fitness, and today we're here with you with French Sport, I'm about to show you how to do this DIY power rack. Materials that you guys are gonna need for today. One pair of earplugs, one pair of safety goggles, a pencil, a carpenter square, one tape measure, one three quarters inch drill bit, one T25 bit, one power drill, one pound of two and a half inch long deck screws with a T25 bit, 12 metal ties, one wood glue, at least two clamps, eight two by fours, four two by sixes. All right guys, so you have a couple of different cutting options that you could use for this project. I prefer the miter saw, and the reason why is because you have this flat plate against it, so you can put all your wood right up against there. It also has a cool little tool that you can use to be able to add your stop blocks to it if need be. You could also use a corded circular hand saw. This provides more power than a battery powered hand saw. So you could also use a battery powered, not much power on it and it drains your batteries really quick. So if you're gonna be saving that battery life uh, for your drills, uh, just go ahead and use a corded one or if you use an old school, just hand saw, doesn't matter. So one of our first steps we are gonna take here is we're actually gonna measure out our two by fours and cut them. We're gonna cut them at 90 inches. Now some power ricks differ in height. Some of them are 87 inches, some of them are all the way to eight feet, but our most common is actually 90 inches. So we're gonna cut them all at 90 inches. So we're gonna use our tape measure, our pencil, and our carpenter square to be able to mark this out. Our next step is actually to cut the two by fours. So if you ever have multiple two by fours instead of just one, if you have four, six, eight, however many that you have, I like creating a little stop block here. So I have a little stop block, so that way I can just run the two by fours to the stop block, and I don't have to keep measuring every single board. It just automatically puts it, you just put the board up against it, and then you cut. And of course, before you cut, use anything. Always use safety goggles and your earplugs. That way you don't lose your hearing. Okay guys, so we have two methods that you can do here. If you don't have the metal ties to where you can put the two by fours like this and have this on the inside, and you wanna stack them on top like this, and that's gonna be 48 inches that you're gonna cut your board and you're gonna screw in your nails directly into the board. I like metal ties because it holds it really together. And so a two by four, for those of you guys who are brand new, are not actually two inches by four inches. It's actually one and a half inches by three and a half inches. So if you have three and a half inches and three and a half inches, that's seven inches. Seven minus 48, which is gonna make you 41 inches. So we're gonna cut the two by six at 41 inches. And measure out 41 inches. Of course, before you cut, always put your safety goggles on and your hearing protection. Safety first. Always make sure it's lined up against the back plate. And when you cut this, you have your line, you wanna make sure the blade's on that right side of the line. You don't want it to the left or right on the line. So whenever you're measuring, make sure the blade is on. All right guys, so the 41 inches was from the front of the power rack. So we'll have one here, one in the back, and then we're also gonna have side boards as well. So for the side boards, your two by four is like I mentioned, three and a half inches. We're putting two of them together to make that three inches. So that's three inches and three inches. So we're gonna minus six inches from four feet, which is gonna be 42 inches. So our next two by sixes that we're gonna cut are 42 inches long. So 41 inches, this is our top, front, and back boards. And then our 42 inches, we have four of these. These are gonna be a side boards that are gonna go top and bottom. All right, guys, so there are a bunch of different types of lumber when you actually go to 
any of the stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. So you wanna be careful when you're choosing and selecting these boards. One of the biggest difference is that you have a, a two by four stud that's more for indoors, and then you have a two by four treated wood, which is for outdoors. So if you're gonna have this outdoors, make sure that you get the treated wood and none of the, the stuff that's made for indoors. Another thing you wanna watch out for is when you're choosing your lumber is that you wanna make sure that it doesn't have any bows or anything like that. So as you can see here, this really goes up here and when you're trying to glue them together, that's gonna be really hard to be able to clamp that in to prevent that from happening. So make sure that you're checking all your, your boards before you buy them. All right guys, so in order for us to fit those three inch J cups, we need to combine two two by fours together. So these two by fours are an inch and a half thick. We need to combine two of them to be able to make the three inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna spread wood glue all the way down here, put the other board on top, and then I'm gonna clamp it all down. And then even if you want to, we put a couple of extra screws just to hold it down to get that nice and firm. Make sure that glue is all the way compacted in there. We put the boards right on top of each other. We wanna make sure that they're nice and lined up. And we're gonna to wanna to start securing our clamps. And as many of wise people have always said, you can never have enough clamps. And just for added support, just so that way I make sure that all these are all down, I'm actually gonna be screwing some screws in here just to make sure this is completely in. It doesn't really matter where these screws are at. These are just to hold everything together. All right, so our next step, we're gonna drill the holes for the J-cup inserts to go into. If you can see here, this J-cup is one inch from the edge, which is the center of that peg. So you wanna measure your J-cups because some J-cups are made differently. So you wanna measure from the outside to the middle of that peg. We're gonna measure where these holes go. So I'm gonna put a tape measure all the way down the side here. And then I have this nice little square that is actually marked right at one inch. So it's marked at one inch. So that way, when I put it against this tape measure, I could square it up and then I just mark it right here. It's gonna be one inch exactly. So my first hole mark is actually gonna be right at 37 inches. So I'm gonna go up 37 inches, boom. There's my mark, it's gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna go up three inches and that's how I am going to mark my holes, okay? So one of the things that you wanna make sure of when you're marking these is that this is all the way flat against there, because otherwise your holes are going to be off. And if you notice, I'm marking from the outside edge of the board. So when you do your, this is for the left side, when you do the right side, you're also gonna to have to mark it from the outside of the board. That's very important. So you don't have to go all the way up. I try to keep in mind for like a person's shoulders. So say if they're doing a back squat or something like that. So if you have some tall people who are like, you know, six feet or so, or six foot five, you might wanna accommodate them. So I'm only gonna go up to about 79 inches here to mark the holes. So the next step we're gonna do is drill in the holes. So have this drill bit attached to it three quarters of an inch is what we're gonna be using. You could also use a spade bit. Those have look like little paddles. But those tend to splinter the wood a little bit more. Uh, so I like using this drill bit to be able to go all the way through. All right, so a couple of tips about this drill. So there's all kinds of different drills out there. Uh, one of the things you wanna make sure that it's set to that drill bit looking dill here. Uh, you don't want it on the hammer or anything else. I changed the speed. So that's a low speed, I changed it to two. And I wanna make sure that this is all the way up to 100. So you wanna make sure that all those settings are there beforehand. And then I'm just gonna go and drill. So the cool thing about this drill bit is it has that nice little point there, so that way you can go and drill it out. All 
All right, there we go. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way down. All right guys, so our next step is to cut these legs. So we are going to cut the legs at 90 inches. So you could actually cut them any way you want, 87 inches, some people go above uh, 90 inches, 90 inches seems to be right about that where you want your power rack to be. So we're gonna take our board here, mark it to 90 inches, boom. Use that square, which is that looks like a triangle, it just squares things up, nice good mark. So we have eight of these boards to cut and I'm using a miter saw here. And the reason why I'm using a miter saw is because I can flush it up and it's gonna give me that nice straight cut. I'm gonna kind of do this to make sure that it's, it's good. Now notice how I'm doing on the left side of the line, not on the right side of the line. I do on the left side of the line because I want the rest of this board. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a little stop block. So that's another great thing about a miter saw is that you can create a stop block here. So I'm putting a block and of course this only works if all your boards are the same length. If you have eight foot boards, which you buy at Home Depot, two by four by eight, then this works. But if they're all different sizes and you're trying to work with scrap wood, then this will not work. Tighten this down, creates that stop block, nice. So now I'm just gonna do, go ahead and execute this cut. Make sure one more time that that board is all the way flush against there. Nice and straight, just like that. Put this aside. Now I'm gonna grab the other board and I'll just be doing this eight more times. Nice and straight, make sure it's up against there. All right, so now that all eight boards are cut, next thing we are going to do is we're actually gonna glue these boards together. So like I said, the reason why we're gluing them together is because we want to create three inches because you are going to be using fringe sport j cups and they don't do three and a half they do three inches that's the reason why we have to glue two two by fours together and not use a four by four four by four is three and a half inches by three and a half inches actually they just like to confuse people who don't know about woodwork call it four by four two by fours are actually one and a half inches by three and a half inches. And actually when I first started out, I did the math and put on graph paper of building an off school. <laughs> At first I did not know about, about that little half inch difference. And so when I put it together, it was all off. I felt really, really stupid, which is okay. I don't mind feeling stupid because when I feel stupid, that means I'm learning something. All right, next up, we're gonna clamp these down. You can never have enough clamps, man. So beforehand, when I was first starting out, I used to go super cheap and I was like, man, I can only buy one or two clamps. And then I found that that was dumb. So I bought a bunch of clamps. <laughs> kind of upped my game, the clamp game. And it's funny because all the woodworkers seeing you work with one or two clamps kind of make fun of you, but it's all right. I can take it. So if you want to impress your woodworking friends, get a bunch of clamps. <laughs> If you're doing light stuff like this, these plastic clamps are okay. You could actually buy them at Walmart. It's not too expensive at all. And what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna make a couple of pilot holes for the screws. What the pilot holes do is that they prevent your wood from splitting. And what I used to do is not use pilot holes at all because sometimes it wouldn't split. And then once again, my carpentry friends were like, you know, Milo, we're people that take pride in taking our time with everything we do because we have to deliver this product to people. And I appreciate that. So then I started putting pilot holes in here. And the reason why I'm screwing this down Make it a little bit tighter and make sure that glue sticks. So now these are two and a half inch deck screws. I like deck screws and I like using them with the star. And the reason why it doesn't strip as much as if you get the Phillips is a T25. So I pretty much buy T25 for almost everything. And these last in the, in the weather too. So if you put this rack outside or inside, it'll, it'll last. Now, if you're, you are gonna put this outside, I do suggest you buy treated wood, not regular studs, because treated wood's gonna last a lot longer outside. And I do suggest, even though it's treated, still go ahead and um, paint it.
All right, awesome. Now these are all good to go, all fleshed up. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mark this board. So we're gonna mark where the holes are gonna go at. And these holes are three quarters of an inch. That's the diameter of that metal peg on the fringe sport J-cup. So then that allows us to slide the J-cups nice and easy in there. All right, so we just flipped the board over. As you can see, it made these little holes all the way straight down. And it made a little bit of splintering, but not too much. But what's good is that these holes right here give me a guide, whoa -bow, just to be able to get that in. And that, that's it. So I'm literally going just a little bit in. Splintered a little bit there, but that's all right. We could always take that out. If you notice, I'm going a little bit slow in the beginning, so that way it could find the hole, and then I go fast at the end. So it does a little hole finding there, so that way. Boom. And we're good to go. Now you're just gonna take all these little splinters off. I have pretty callous hands, so like even a splinter doesn't really affect it. I could literally stick a pin needle in my fingertips and it doesn't even, it'll literally hang there. So if you don't have callous fingers, callous hands, I suggest wearing gloves for this. You know, you definitely don't want to be picking out splinters out of your hand the whole time. So I'm gonna run this over really quick with a sander. And it looks like I missed one hole. Boom. So definitely look for that. I noticed that there was a little bit of a gap here and I was like, oh, missing a hole. So I was able to find it really quick, small little circle. And if you notice, I couldn't even see it at first. That small little input there was able to find the hole and drill itself in to do a, a high speed. There you go. And I'm gonna go grab my sander. All right, so now I'm gonna use an orbital sander uh, to be able to sand this all out. So you have those little, little splinters coming out. So with it being three and a half inches and we're going one inch in, when we're gonna start putting this together, we want one side of the holes on the left, one side of the holes on the right. You don't want them to be like this because then you're not gonna be able to match up well. You want that four feet distance to where you can put that barbell on. The other thing I mentioned uh, earlier is like uh, when I had the, the screws in there, I had to take it back out because I was getting a little bit too close for my comfort because I was afraid I was gonna hit that screw and I just re-put it right here. And here's the thing guys, the great thing about DIY is that you can mess up as much as you want. Uh, even though it has a little hole there, paint or the stain is gonna cover it when I actually uh, torch it, it's gonna, you're not even really gonna notice it there. And we do stuff, we mess up things all the time. So you don't need to be a perfectionist, you don't need to worry about stuff. The, the only thing that, that we're gonna have here is we have fun, we make something functional, and we just perfect it as we go. So keep messing up, keep doing stuff. Don't be worried about it. if you see one little extra drill hole or you, you messed up by putting it too close, uh, you could always fix that, all right? There are tons of different ties in our brackets that you can find at Home Depot. So if you're balling on a budget, if you're actually more than balling on a budget, these are $5 a piece. And these are actually preferred ways to be able to use when you're connecting a piece that's gonna go this way and going across. Cause then I could just boom, put it just like that and then screw it in, screw it into the adjacent board. But like I said, these are five bucks a piece. This two by four, even though it's, it's made out of wood, this power rack's gonna be holding a lot of weight, 400 plus pounds. So this, if you have the money, go ahead and get those. If not, what I suggest is getting one each of these. So these are about 50 cents a piece. This one's like 75 cents a piece. So it's less than $2. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this underneath it. So it caps the boards going on top, caps the, the side. 
and I'm gonna add this angle uh, bracket just so that way it makes it that much more sturdier than just having just one piece. So you want this thing to be sturdy because you're gonna be putting a lot of weight on it. Of course, this is not as good as having this uh, power rick made out of steel, but hey, you know, this is just a fun DIY project. In case we go back on lockdown, you'll be able to do this. Or if you know, just have nothing else to do, you're lonely, don't have your spouse and uh, you're like me, then uh, this is what you do in your free time. And I'm using a little bit skinnier or a little bit shorter screws here. So this is an uh, inch five eighths. You can also use inch and a quarter uh, if you want to. You're not gonna use a two and a half inch. Once again, a T25 on there. So that way I don't have to keep switching bits. All right, so now we are gonna figure out where to put these brackets. And you're gonna see now why this thing is called a square as opposed to a triangle, even though it is in the shape of a triangle. <clears throat> so what this does is squares everything up. I'm gonna put the square here. I'm gonna square it up. There's a little bit of a gap here, right? So I need to adjust this board till there's no gap. Now there's no gap here. That's awesome. This is flushed against here. I'm not gonna screw this two by six on here. Earlier, what I said is that if you want to screw it on, you're more than welcome. If you can't afford the brackets or if you're just lazy, you could actually screw this directly on here, but make sure this is not 41 inches, it's gonna be 48 inches. So make sure these need to be four feet apart. So now what I'm gonna do, this is nice and squared. I'm just gonna mark this. I'm just gonna mark the board right across here. And all that's gonna tell me now is where to put this angle bracket. So now I know I can put it right here. And this is a side view, guys. So don't think I'm gonna put, this is actually gonna go tilted down and then that's gonna create the lip for this. So that's the reason why I'm doing it this way. All right, so now I'm gonna drill these pilot holes. Make sure that thing's lined up before you screw it all the way in. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing to that other board. All right, so I'm gonna be squaring this up, making sure. Now, if you see a little gap in here, you're gonna move the bottom of this two by four. I don't see a gap, it's nice and good. Mark that in. It lets me know where to put this bad boy right on that line. And because we're trying to be professional carpenters, we're gonna do the pilot hole first. What's good about the pilot hole too, is that it's gonna guide that screw in and not really have it to where the screw is gonna move this L bracket. Grab my screws. All right, putting this in there. And I always go just a little bit, not too tight. Cause just in case I gotta make this straight, I'm good to go. Voila. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over. Like I said, this is for the front of the board, so it's gonna go just like that, all right? All right, so now we're gonna be attaching this face, front face here to these. So we turn this over, we're gonna turn this over over here. Now, if you notice, these are up. So I know exactly how far it's up. It's actually up by two by four. So I'm gonna place my little two by four there on that end. Place my two by four on this end. And now, got it really nice. Drill my pilot holes. Grab it on this side. Amazing. So now I'm gonna screw these in. I'm gonna do one at a time on each side because I wanna make sure that this is nice and fleshed. And you know, you might have to make a little bit of adjustments, but it's all right. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. Now I finish it off. Very nice. All right, so now I'm gonna put these down. You notice I'm gonna put them down at an angle. And the reason why is because that's gonna prevent the boards from swaying this way, kicking out that way, and from this kicking out like that. So this has this right here, but we wanna make sure that that prevents this all together. I'm gonna drill all the pilot holes. All right, so now I'm gonna drill in my screws here. Now I'm screwing this other side down. And then that allows me to screw in the rest of them without this thing flipping around on you. Now I'm gonna go one more time. I'm just gonna go make sure it's in there, in there. Good to go. 
thing's not gonna budge. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. All right guys, so if you didn't wanna put your hands down there like I did, and you wanna be, call this being efficient, I don't call it being lazy, you could actually clamp it down. Drill our pilot holes. So if you're afraid that you might drill all the way through, I'm gonna show you a cool little trick that you use with some painter's tape. If you don't own painter's tape, I highly recommend you getting it. It just has so many uses and just cool tricks to them, man. So if I want to go down that far, what I'm going to do is just put my handy dandy painter's tape around there. And then now I know when I drill, drill to the tape. That lets me know the depth that I need to go. There's a nice little trick. Now we're gonna screw everything in. Just like I said before, we're gonna screw one side this side. And now the rest in between. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just repeat this process uh, for the other side. All right guys, so now we took the squat rack and I try to do this DIY project for you guys as if you're doing it by yourself. So of course, if you have more than one person, that helps out tremendously. But uh, you know, I'm a lone survivor out here. So you know, this is what we do. This is the front end of the squat rack. So if you're looking at it this way, this is gonna be the front end of the squat rack. This is the back end of the squat rack slash power rack. I'm just setting it up. I'm using my sawhorse here and I'm using the edge of this. You could use some more sawhorses to kind of just stand it up a little bit. And so now I'm gonna put the sides on this power rack. So I gotta put a side here, down below, on top, and then down below again. So at first, what we were thinking about was going with 42 inches, putting them on the inside. When you do that, you gotta create some little protectors here uh, to stand up the board. We just thought that might be just a little bit too complicated for some people. So we wanna make this power rack to be simple to where just about anybody could build this. This is kind of like an intermediate build as opposed to a super beginner. So what we did decide to do is take two by six, cut it into 48 inches, which is four feet long. So we want this four feet wide so you'd be able to have that inside. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be screwing this two by six in. So I'm gonna be using my square to square it all up. And that's what's great about a square is that as long as everything is squared, it doesn't matter if the bottom is all crooked or anything like that. As long as this, this square matches up with all angles and all sides, you're good to go. I'm gonna screw in one first, and I'm always gonna check to make sure that this thing is squared. All right, awesome. So now I'm gonna screw opposite side. Now I'm gonna do the rest. All right, so now we're gonna come over to the other side. Okay, as you can see, this moved out just a little bit. And then here's where it comes a little bit harder because we're gonna have to move this to be in line with that. Let's kick this board out. And once again, I'm using my square all throughout this. Okay, so now I just wanna make sure that this is squared, 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 we're good to go. I'm gonna drill those pilot holes. And guys, here's the deal, man. If you guys see something that you guys have a tool or a tip or something like that, man, write in the comments. This is just the way that I learned. Of course, I learned, you know, everyone learns different. Chucking my square, always checking that that thing is squared. Good to go. All right, so now we're just gonna be doing that to the rest of the sides. We're gonna be doing it to this side that's on the ground. We're we'll doing it to that side on top and then that side on the ground as well. When I get to the bottom, I'm gonna make a little bit of adjustment. Instead of having this flush with the bottom of the power rack, which some people do, but if you have uneven floors, you don't want to uh, do that. You actually want to have bare minimum space. So I'm gonna actually move the two by six up from the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it up far enough to where I could actually stick my 
toes underneath there if I want to be able to do sit-ups. So now I have the weight of the whole power rack to be able to slide my toes underneath the bottom, and now it's also a place to where I can do my sit-ups. Put your toes underneath there, weight of the power because I'm able to uh, get you to do that. And then now I'm just going to create the rest of the sides here, get it all squared away. Let's get this baby rock and rolling. Yeah, buddy. All right, so for the final last step, we are going to torch this bad boy. So anything with wood, I always like torching it. it adds a little rustic feel to it. Uh, and on top of that, it adds a little bit of extra layer of protection. Anything that I may have missed and sanding or whatever, that torch is gonna to kind of take care of it. So I get a little Benzomatic torch. So this little bad boy is really easy to use. You can find this at any hardware store. They actually come in a pack where it comes with the torch head and the canister. And all you have to do really is just push that and then you see the torch flame come in. Push this button, it's gonna hold it in, and then you just push it again to take it off. So it's pretty simple, it's really easy. One of the biggest things about torching, and I've done this, I've done a lot of rustic flags and rustic furniture, is that you wanna keep it really nice and smooth as you go down. So you wanna adjust your body going down to it. You don't want to move your hand down like this or go back and forth, because then it'll create splotches on there. And the splotches is what you wanna avoid, because you don't wanna see bunch of little dark circles going up and down. You really want it nice and even like this. So the way all the burn marks is all the way even, that's what you want to try to accomplish. We're going to go ahead and torch it, turn it on, boom, lock it. And you don't need to stay on there that long for the torch, right? If you notice, I am not on there that long at all. The longer you stay, the more burn you get. The closer you get, the more burn you get. So you really gotta do a distance. You just gotta make sure that you do it to all the sides. All right, awesome. So next step after we're done torching it, we're gonna add uh, what I like to do is a polyurethane exterior coat. So the polyurethane really brings out that grain in the wood, but it also protects it. So it protects it from rain, all that other good stuff. So that's polyurethane exterior. There's a difference between the exterior and the interior. One of the things you wanna watch out about polyurethane is what you don't wanna do is actually get it to where, where you glob up. So a lot of people, they're not careful with the polyurethane and it starts to glob up. And when it starts to glob up, that's when you get into trouble. Mix it up. Now you could use a sponge brush with this. You could use a regular brush with it. You could even use uh, rags. Pretty much anything that you're gonna use, you pretty much get ready to discard because uh, this thing is thick, but it gives a really, really nice shine. You'll see the difference here. And I don't want to add on a whole lot to here. I'm dragging out all the excess and you wanna go nice smooth coats. So as you can see, man, that really makes the wood pop there. What you don't wanna do, start to, man, this is taking too long, so what I'm gonna do is just pour a lot on my brush, because then it's gonna to start to glob up, and once it globs up, man, you're pretty much done. It's gonna create a little water droplet on there, and then when that, that happens, you're, it's no bueno. The other thing you wanna watch out for too is that since I'm doing it here, up and down, I wanna look at the sides here, and make sure that I don't glob up on the sides. Uh, so what happens a lot is that the excess will get build up here and you start to, to glob up on the sides as well. So you just wanna be really nice and smooth. I like doing long strokes with it. Again, make sure you don't have an excess amount of it. What's good about the polyurethane is that since it makes the wood shine so much, you actually see where you left off if you need to take a break or whatnot. All right, awesome. So I just put the finished putting polyurethane on. I let it dry it overnight, so it's about 24 hours. And now we're gonna go test this bad boy out. Yeah, buddy.
All right, guys, well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave any comments uh, down below. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, comments, maybe some improvements that you guys might have. I would love to see pictures of after you guys have done this. It'd be awesome to do that. And then also we're giving this one away. So please like, subscribe, and leave a comment on the YouTube channel. We will choose a random winner to be able to win this actual squat rack and we'll deliver it straight to you. So thank you very much once again for watching Fringe Sport and watching this DIY tutorial. My name is Milo, owner of Milo Obstacle Fitness. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one.